Hello and welcome to the School of Spirit, the School of Ministry in the Word and the Spirit. We're talking about the wonderful person of the Holy Spirit. And we've come right to the heart of this subject. That is the presence of God. In other words, the Holy Spirit brings God's presence right to you, right where you are, right now. You can feel His presence by the Holy Spirit. And not only does the Holy Spirit bring God's presence to you, but the Holy Spirit brings you to God's presence. That's what the Christian gospel is all about. Jesus is called the Emmanuel, God with us. That was the name given to him by the angel, Gabriel. Emmanuel, God with us. This means Jesus is God with us. And when Jesus on this earth, walking and living and ministering, everybody could find him and meet him and get to know him. And we all know that I came to Jesus to go back to be with the Father. Now we have to leave this earth. But he said, don't worry, I'm going to send someone else. We've been looking at this with Talo, Tara, Slater, another one, another comforter, just like me. Alok, one like the first. Paraclet, one called to be alongside you. So the Holy Spirit is another one, a comforter, just like Jesus. But he will be with us forever. We don't see Jesus by the disciples, but we know him by the Holy Spirit. God the Holy Spirit brings heaven's peace in our lives. And so in this session, we're going to look at how the Holy Spirit brings God's presence into our lives, and in particular, the presence of Jesus. How we can stay in communion with Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit. And how we can begin to develop a life of real intimacy with the Lord. This is the very heart of the teaching of the Spirit. God bless you as you walk the next few days. I hope you have fun. And so what are we to do with it? What are we to do about this? We are to develop an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. Intimate fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Experience His presence. Listen to His voice. Hear His words just as if they were our, as they really are, the words of Jesus Himself. Remember the book of Revelation. The prophetic word was, Hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now, we don't, do not hear Jesus audibly, not very often. I don't know if you ever had that. I've never had exactly an audible voice of God speaking to me, but I've had that inner voice, that inner witness so often, so many times, constantly, the Holy Spirit speaks. Now, He speaks in a variety of ways. We've got to learn to discover His voice, to understand His presence. And when you hear the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to you personally and intimately, then you know His presence and you can respond to His presence and begin to fellowship with Him. We know His voice, the voice of the Spirit, through the Scriptures. He wrote the Scriptures, or at least He inspired them. Every Scripture is God-breathed and is God-breathed. So the Scripture continues to be the living voice of God. Not every Scripture was God-breathed, but every Scripture is God-breathed. In other words, it carries the presence of God. So when you go to the Scriptures, expect the Spirit to speak to you. He will speak to you through other believers. Because if the Spirit of God dwells in your brother and in your sister, the Holy Spirit can use your brother and sister to bring the Word of God to you. The Holy Spirit will speak through creation. You know the Holy Spirit is part of, or is involved in creation, remember? In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2, the Spirit is hovering over the surface of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light, because the Spirit of God is involved in creation. All of the beautiful creation around you can be a voice of God to you, especially when the Holy Spirit speaks to you through God's gifts of creation. The Holy Spirit can speak to you through spiritual gifts, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, gift of prophecy. All of these ways the Holy Spirit speaks. And then the Holy Spirit can speak to you directly to your own spirit, and you can commune with the Holy Spirit. Have you learned to fellowship with the Holy Spirit yet? Have you learned to fellowship with the Spirit on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, I'll tell you something. There is a, a, a vacuum in you, a need for a level of fellowship and intimacy, which only the Holy Spirit can fill. 
Some of you are still looking for that in relationships. Forget it. You need this relationship with the Spirit in order to be in a relationship with other people. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Only God can give you this. Your husband, your wife can't give this to you. I'll tell you something. And you need this in order to be a good husband, to be a good wife. Develop intimacy with the Holy Spirit. When you are fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit, you will find a personal transformation coming from this presence in your life. That's what this is all about. That's why we are to know the Spirit and to live in His presence. Because the transformation comes. Now we're all influenced to one degree or another by people, the people we spend time with. It's the same with Jesus. Spend time with Jesus will be influenced by Jesus. That's why if you spend time with the Holy Spirit, wait upon the Holy Spirit, you're going to be transformed. This is it said in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18, that we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the Lord who is the Spirit. That's why you must stay in the Spirit's presence consciously and experience the Holy Spirit's presence. I'm not suggesting you just chase after spiritual experiences, no. But you need to experience the Holy Spirit. You need to experience God. And as you experience God, you're transformed into the image of God. When you saturate yourself in the four Gospels, gazing at Jesus, grasping His attitudes and His motives, beginning to appreciate how you should think, how you should think and how you should behave, when you understand that and then saturate yourself and soak yourself in the Spirit's presence, you are empowered to become like Him. You're transformed into His very presence, into His very image by His presence. And this is not just an intellectual process. It is a spiritual process of the Holy Spirit taking you and shaping you and molding you into the image of Jesus by living in His presence. There we find Him uh, touching our mo motives, molding them and shaping them, energizing our wills, empowering our wills to be like Jesus. I'll tell you something, in the presence of Jesus, you will say yes to anything He says. Amen. Being with you, the psalmist says, Psalm 73, I desire nothing on earth. So we've seen that Jesus' ministry had several themes. He called his people to obey him as king, to depend upon him as savior, and to follow his perfect life as the man, the son of man, and to worship him as holy God. And so in the spirit, Jesus is present both in us and with us in all of these three and more aspects of his nature and ministry. He's the king of kings conqueror of evil, the ruler of sickness, judge of the whole earth, and he is with us. So we live in the presence of Jesus, by living in the presence of the Spirit, nothing we think or do is missed by him, but, the Spirit, but by the Spirit, the King speaks to you. He is the suffering servant of humanity, the shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep, the blood-stained substitute who bore God's wrath against sin. He is with us by the Spirit, and as He is with us by the Spirit, the suffering servant points out His sacrificial way of living and dying, and we become like Him. He is the ideal human being, the perfect human specimen, the perfect pattern for all humankind, the sympathizing friend of sinners. He is with us, and in the Spirit we live with Him, and He is with us. And by the Spirit, the Son of Man shows us that he really understands our weaknesses, but he still accepts us anyway and urges us to go on following him more closely. The glorious, light-bearing, life-giving Son of God, the living Word, the complete revelation of the invisible Father, he is with us by the Spirit. By the Spirit, the living God fellowships with us. And this must make a difference to our lives. Can anyone be in the presence of Jesus in this way? yet remain unchanged, of course not. So we have, by the Spirit bringing the presence of Jesus, personal fellowship with His presence, personal transformation of His presence, 
and personal assurance of His presence as well. Well, we need all of these things. We need to know what it is to dwell so, so real, so powerful in the presence of the Holy Spirit. What I'm encouraging you today, what I'm trying to do to, to you today, is to whet your appetite for the des- and desire for the presence of the Holy Spirit and for the presence of Jesus Christ, so that you will never ever want to get out of that baptistry. You want to stay there forever and be soaked soaked in the presence of God, like you might soak yourself in a bath or a shower. When we are in the living in the presence of the Spirit, we have the personal assurance that comes to our hearts. Romans 8, 16 promises that the Holy Spirit will help us know that we are children of God. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And because we are children of God, we know that we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. So living in the presence of the Spirit is is as much proof as we need that we are loved and accepted by God. And it's that presence which gives us the seal, the seal of God upon our lives, assuring us that we belong to Him. It's the seal, the mark of ownership. It's the seal of protection that keeps us safe, that that seals us for the day of redemption. We are knowing that we are redeemed, that we have the first fruits. This marvelous assurance of the Spirit is a theme right away throughout the whole of Scriptures. Remember when we were studying the Old Testament passages, we saw that in Genesis chapter 8, it, uh, verses 9 through 14, it was the dove, the symbol of the Holy Spirit, that brought Noah assurance that God had not forgotten him. And it was the presence of the dove that was the revelation of this hope that the promise had been fulfilled. And the dove brought that olive branch, showing that, yes, God... God's wrath had subsided, the waters had subsided, and God's promise had been fulfilled. It was the dove descending upon Jesus at his baptism that uh, was happened at the same time as the Father's voice saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. When the dove settles on your life, you have the assurance of the Father that you are a son of God, that you are a daughter of God, and he's pleased with you. The blood of Jesus Christ has made you acceptable. And it's also clear that uh, because we know Him, there is this deep, unbreakable certainty of adoption and immovable conviction of the Father's love, which is experienced no matter what our circumstances and can make the worst of our circumstances seem irrelevant because God is with us. That's the work. Holy Spirit. He comes to bring the presence of God near to us, not some God somewhere out there, but deep down in our hearts, nearer to us than hands and feet. And this presence will carry you through any crisis, any ministry conflict, Every persecution, this would carry you into the very presence of God in heaven itself because it is but a foretaste of heaven. The Holy Spirit comes to give you a taste of heaven. I have experienced the presence of God in so many powerful ways. I have been in the presence of God so so clearly that I knew if I opened my eyes, I would see Jesus. I couldn't. I've stood on public platforms and ministered, and Jesus has taken over, and he has stood with me in public ministry. I'm thinking of one meeting in Brazil in particular. It's happened many times in many different ways. I'm thinking of one meeting in particular when after a while when the miracles were, were, were just were taking over. Jesus was taking over in the meeting. Miracles were just happening all over the place. Deaf ears, blind eyes, cripples, creative miracles taking place. And Jesus was there doing it. 
loving His people. Oh, and that's why I want to tell you, my friend, as I open my heart, I'm going to start teaching to take you through the manual. I'm opening my heart right now to tell you this is why I'm in ministry. It's for the fellowship that I experience with Jesus. When you're partnering with the Holy Spirit, Jesus is right there. You are yoked with Jesus, and He's standing there ministering to His people. I thought I could never experience His presence more than that. But I remember one day, I was preparing for a meeting. That's why I love traveling ministry and free from the pastoral responsibilities. You can wait on God. First hour, just by like that. Second hour, third hour, fourth hour, you don't know you've lost track of time. So they come to knock on the door saying, I walked from the bathroom to the bedroom. Just a few seconds. Five, ten, fifteen seconds. I can really describe it to you like this. God lifted the veil, ever so briefly and ever so slightly. And it was as if the presence of God that fills the universe broke through in such a small degree. For such a short period of time. But I was conscious of these moments of what heaven is. I felt his presence. Even more than on the public platform when Jesus was there opening the eyes of the blind. It is a wonderful place. And these were my thoughts. If that was all that I ever had, those few seconds, then it would be worth more than any suffering I have ever endured or any suffering I could ever endure because it spoke of a reality. The reality of God. And just think, one day we are going to be in that presence of God. Consciously, fully, manifesting in that presence. But until then, we have the forces down payment. The earnest of our expectation in the Holy Spirit. And He gives us a taste of heaven. So that's why God calls us to live in His presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is with us. When Jesus came, He came to reconcile us with the Father, to bring us back between us and God. And the demonstration of that. Being bridge is the promise of the Spirit into our lives. He brings not just the presence of Jesus, but also the presence of the Father. And so, we have seen the New Testament makes a lot of the Spirit's power and purity, but it's even more important for us to understand that the Holy Spirit mediates the presence, the Word, and the activity. Spirit is presented as the Spirit of Jesus Christ. 
and God is saying. We receive this raised spirit that was with Jesus and upon Jesus. Jesus is the anointed one, he is the spirit giver. And the coming of the spirit as in our lives makes him real to us. It was in a real sense Jesus coming back. He came back by his spirit. When we talk of the second coming of Jesus, we refer to the physical appearing of Jesus, which is yet to be. But before that physical appearing, the second coming of Jesus, we have him coming by his spirit and manifestation. He said, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. And he did come by his spirit. The dwelling of the spirit is the dwelling of Christ. And the spirit comes to transform us. We see from Christmas the essential work of the Holy Spirit is to mediate the presence of God into our lives. But this presence has a purpose. The presence is for glory, the glory of God. And that's used in two different ways. The glory of God, it refers to the self revealed character of God. Also, it refers to the visible revelation of God's presence. The word glory means weight, because weight is worth, and that is as he revealed himself, but also as he manifests himself. So it's speaking both of revelation and of manifestation. And so God wants to reveal his glory to us because he wants to manifest his glory to us. We find God's glory appearing uh, to the seventy elders in Mount Sinai, Exodus 24. We find him appearing in regular intervals. Uh, the hour of sacrifice. We find the glory of God filling the temple in the Old Testament. And so we also find the glory in the New Testament resting upon Jesus. He is the revelation of the Father's glory. We beheld his glory. Glory is the only begotten of the Father because Jesus is the complete self revelation of God's character and also the clearest manifestation of God's presence. And so the glory of God revealed in Jesus very often was a was a reference to the miracles that he did, the manifestation of that glory, but it was also the revelation of the Father's heart. And since Pentecost, through the coming of the Holy Spirit, we as the body of Christ have been called to be carriers of the glory of God. And so when we are full of the Holy Spirit, we reflect the glory of the Lord to the world. We are being changed by the Spirit from glory to glory. Second Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 15. Changed from glory to glory by the Holy Spirit. And so we, not only do we see that glory, but we also reflect that glory to the world. And this brings us to the real purpose of the Spirit manifesting the presence of God is that we might bring a witness to the world. The whole purpose of glory is for witness. Did you know that? We reflect that glory to the world as a witness. One way of describing this is of thinking about our life rather like the moon. We have the moon, the sun, and the earth. You know, the moon has no capacity to shine of itself. Did you know that? When you see the moon shining, it's not the moon shining, it's the sun shining. When you see a Christian shining, it's not that Christian shining, it's the sun shining. Because we reflect the Lord's glory. Now, when you have an eclipse, uh, the moon is eclipsed when the earth passes between the sun and the moon. So when the world gets between you and the Son of God, that glory is eclipsed and you cease to reflect. But also when the, when the moon passes between the sun and the earth, the sun is eclipsed. So when we get in the way of Jesus Christ, we eclipse him and then we hinder the passage of life. We can think of this rather like floodlights in a building. When floodlights are on, the building is seen. You don't notice the floodlights, you just see the effects of the floodlights. So this is what we are called to be. We are called to allow the Holy Spirit to so floodlight Jesus that we reflect his glory into the world. And so it's possible for us, like wherever we look, to separate the work of the Holy Spirit from witness. When we think of the Spirit's power, 
what a witness. When we think of the Spirit's purity, its purity to witness that purity to the world, or we think of the Spirit's performance and the abilities and the gifts that the Spirit gives to us, that's there for witness to reach out, touch other people. So if we think of the Spirit's presence, it's there to be a witness to the world that the world may know and the world may be born. So the Spirit surrounds us and fills us with His power so that people will believe in Jesus, that they will see He's raised from the dead. He saturates us with His holiness that our behavior will not cause people to stumble. He brings us into the presence of Jesus so that our lives, wherever we are, will reveal the glorious nature of God. That's why the Spirit takes the things of Christ and makes them known to us. That's why He brings the glory of Jesus to us, so that through this relationship with the Holy Spirit and the changes He brings, we can witness to the world. That's the purpose of the coming of the Holy Spirit. That's why we are called to live in the Holy Spirit. We come to the end of this session now. I want you to take that thought away with you. You are called to live in the presence of the Holy Spirit. You are called to fellowship with the Holy Spirit, to commune with the Holy Spirit. And as you do that, His glory will fill your life and you will reflect that glory to the world as a witness. God bless you. At the end of this session, we're going to come back and talk later on about how we can minister in the Holy Spirit. God be with you as we come to the end of this session. And that brings today's teaching to an end. And I pray that God has blessed you and he will continue to bless you as you go through this series on knowing the Holy Spirit. And I pray that God will bring you closer and closer to this wonderful third person of the Trinity, God the Holy Spirit. So till next time, goodbye and God bless you.